Hello and welcome to a holiday edition of Scripture of the Day. As we dive into John chapter 7, we see that it's time for the Feast of Booths. And Jesus has to make a decision if he's going to go up to the feast or not. And it's kind of like how we're feeling right now as we make this video that we're approaching Christmas and it's time to celebrate the season. In verses 1 to 36, Jesus goes to a feast. And at first, there's some debate about whether Jesus is going to go or not. Because the Jews are seeking to kill him. And if he goes up to Jerusalem to right where they are, they'll come after him. But then he's talking to his brothers. And his brothers are egging him on and saying, Hey, if you're doing all these miracles and these signs so people will know who you are, then you should go and make yourself known. So it's clear here. At the beginning of John chapter 7, that Jesus' own brothers do not yet believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God. And they're egging him on as brothers do. And so there's a tension here between Jesus and his brothers. And this might be a tension that you're feeling at this Christmas time of year. Because for you, Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, and he humbled himself to be born as a man. And we celebrate that incarnation, that Jesus would come down, Emmanuel, God with us. And maybe when you get together with your family, your loved ones, you want to praise Jesus. You want to preach the gospel of Jesus. Even at your family gathering and you're like, how can I do that without offending them? But I really want to talk about it with them. If you're feeling that tension and you're like, wow, I feel divided from my own family. How do I reach them with the gospel in love? Here's some encouragement for you. Jesus knows how you feel. He, he experienced that same kind of division with his own brothers. So as you go to pray for your family members and loved ones this Christmas, you have a high priest in Jesus Christ who intercedes on your behalf before the Father and he can sympathize with your weaknesses. He knows how it feels with unbelieving family. Maybe you're thinking, oh, I'd love to bring my family to church with me. Well, we've got services we're getting ready for this weekend. Our Christmas-themed services at our normal time, Saturday night at 5, Sunday at 9 and 11. But we've also got our Christmas Eve service, which is a different service, at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock with baptisms, where people are going to share their testimonies of how Jesus came to save them. And so maybe you're thinking, oh, I'd love for my family to come with me. Well, as you, as you pray for that and as you experience this tension, we'll be praying along with you here at the church. And we'll have services ready for them to hear the gospel in a fun and family kind of a way with the little town of Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. And so there's that tension going on before the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles, as it's called. And we might be feeling the same tension here in John 7 in some of our families. Now, this feast, they would set aside a whole week to go up to the city of Jerusalem. And they would live in tents. And this was to remember what had happened to them in the Old Testament when God delivered them out of Egypt before he was going to take them to the promised land. He provided for them in the wilderness when they lived in tabernacles or tents or booths. That's why it's the feast of. We're remembering God's provision in the Old Testament. So they set aside the week, they go up to Jerusalem, and everybody, whether you live in Jerusalem or whether you're coming from another place, everybody lives in tents for the week. And they would kind of have a couple of key moments in their celebration that are important for the Gospel of John. One is they would remember how God provided for them water out of a rock when they were in the wilderness in Exodus 17. 
and they would have this water ceremony where the high priest would have this golden jar and he would go to the pool of Siloam and fill it with water and walk through and all the people would gather around as he came back to the temple to pour out the water and Jesus is going to be master of the moment. He's going to steal the scene later on in today's chapter. And then there was also as they remembered the pillar of fire, God would appear to them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And so they would celebrate at this feast by lighting Jerusalem up at night. And they would light the torches in the temple and, and it was just shining in the darkness. And Jesus is gonna say that he's the light of the world in John chapter eight. We'll get to that uh, next time. But this is how life was, not only in the Old Testament, but at the time of Jesus, where they had feasts. They had time set aside for everybody to go up to Jerusalem together. And we want to have a time like that with the men here at our church. That's why we were announcing the Ascend Men's Retreat, January 18th to 20th. We're gonna do what Jesus does here when he goes up to the feast. We're gonna set aside some time. We're gonna go up the mountain uh, to Lake Arrowhead there, and we're gonna all kind of live at that camp there together, and we're gonna spend time remembering who God is and being in his presence there together. And so Jesus is going now up to this feast, and he decides to go and he makes his appearance. He makes himself known. He starts speaking publicly and he immediately becomes the focal point, the center of attention at this feast. And some people are amazed at his teachings and believing in him. Other people want to kill him. They send officers out to arrest him. And then comes the big moment of the feast. And here comes Jesus to steal the scene. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So here it is, the last day of the feast, the great day. Here comes the priest carrying the water, and Jesus stood up and cried out. You want to talk about just making the most of the opportunity, capitalizing on the symbolism of the water from the rock now being reenacted right there in Jerusalem. Jesus says, hey, are you thirsty? Come to me, and out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. This takes me back to one of my favorite songs. Growing up as a kid, going to church, I got a river of life flowing out of me, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see, opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I got a river of life. And then remember this, spring it up, oh well. Anybody remember these songs? Splish, splash within my soul. Anybody? Uh, if you went to church growing up back in the day, uh, we, we sang this scripture right here. And this goes back to what we've already learned in John 4, that Jesus wants to put a fountain inside of you. He wants to put a river of living water. He wants you to actually have life within you. And John gives us some commentary and explains it. What is Jesus talking about? He's talking about his spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of the living God dwells in us. At the moment that we believe in Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. And now that spirit, the life of Jesus is in us. And the life of Jesus is flowing out of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, if you believe in Jesus, I've got some encouraging news for you today. You have a river of living water in your soul. You have the Spirit of God and He can give you everything you need to empower your life, to fill your life so that your cup will overflow today. You have, sing it, you've got a river of life flowing out of you. That's what you've got. And this was what he was offering to everyone. This is what he is announcing to the crowd. And this is the reality of everybody who believes in Jesus Christ, that his spirit is filling us with the life of Jesus. And that is true of you today. And we should rejoice at the indwelling work of the Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit is in us, he, he never leaves us. 
and he's all he seals us for eternity he's the guarantee of our heavenly inheritance and he's now teaching us from the word even as you read the scripture he's helping you to understand he's illuminating your heart and your mind he's causing you to walk in God's ways and empowering your steps today you have the holy spirit of the living god that's what jesus says here and that's an encouraging word for us as we go through our day. Now, to hear Jesus speak, I hope you you feel the power of reading the word. I hope when you get into the scripture, you're filled with the spirit. But it was powerful for these people to hear Jesus speak, and he divided the crowd. So let's break it down here. In verses 37 to 39, we have the rivers of living water that Jesus offers, mastering the moment, stealing the scene, offers it to the crowd, just like he did to the woman at the well and those in that town in Samaria. Now he's on center stage in Jerusalem, shouting to everyone who will listen to him. But then at the rest of the chapter, in verses 40 all the way down to 52 at the end of the chapter, Jesus talks his way out of arrest. So these officers, uh, they, they finally come back to the leaders there. And they say, where's Jesus? Why didn't you arrest him? And the officers say, in verse 46, no one ever spoke like this man. See, there are such power in the words of Jesus. Soldiers are sent to arrest him, and they listen to him speak, and they come back empty-handed because they're so moved by his teaching. See, this is one thing that you and I have to remember as we read through the Gospel of John. Not only were people amazed by his miracles, but they also marveled at his words. Just to hear Jesus speak was a powerful experience, similar to what you and I can experience as we really read the scriptures, or as we hear it really preached and explained, and the Spirit does that work on us. These soldiers, they experience that, and they're like, we've never heard anything like this. We've never been convicted, been illuminated. We've never heard anything like this. We're not going to arrest that guy. And there was a great division among the crowd. Some people said, this is the prophet, this is the Christ. Others are like, does the Christ really come from Galilee? And in verse 43, it says, there was a division among the people over him, just like we experience today. Some people, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They live for him. They worship him. They love him with all their heart. Others reject him. They want nothing to do with him. They like to arrest him. They're going to go on to kill him. They argue against him on purpose. Jesus, he divides his critics. And praise the Lord, you and I, we can be on the side of Jesus Christ. We can believe in him. We can worship him for who he really is as the Christ, the Son of God. And we can have his spirit flowing out of us today. I've got a river of life flowing out of me, and you do too. And we'll see you for more from the Feast of Booze in John chapter 8. So we hope you'll join us again here on Scripture of the Day.